The Honourable Member from Selkirk Interlake Eastman. This Prime Minister isn't worth the cost, the crime, the corruption, or the cover ups. After hiding the Winnipeg lab documents from Canadians for over three years, we finally know why the Liberals blocked Parliament. We know that Dr. Chu had close and clandestine relationships with entities of the People's Republic of China and collaborated with military scientists. The People's Liberation Army is a known security threat to Canada. That's right. So, why did the co- Prime Minister cover up this breach of national security instead of arresting these spies. Good question. The Honourable Minister of Health. Well, I'll answer the first part of the question as I suspect they're going to have other questions on the second element. On the first order, it was uh, the first offer was to have all parliamentarians uh, look at the documents through NSI COP. That was an immediate offer. Some opposition members said that that wasn't a full, that wasn't a good answer because they wanted to make sure that if there was a need for redactions to be released, they wanted a process. So I, as House Leader at that point in time, suggested an ad hoc process that would ensure that an independent arbiter would make the decision about releasing those documents. I would remind the member again that it is an independence decision of the public health agency to make redactions. I'm sure he's not suggesting that anything else other than that should happen. The Honourable Member from Selkirk Interlake That Eastman. House Leader actually sued the Speaker. Mr. Dr. Chu maliciously shared technology and materials from the Winnipeg Labs with Major General Chen, one of Beijing's top commanders at the Academy Academy of Military Medical Science. The Academy is described in the CSIS documents as the highest medical research institution of the People's Liberation Army of the PRC and has offensive biological weapons capabilities. And one of its objectives is to transform the results of basic civilian research into military applications and biotechnologies. The Chinese built military can now make more biological weapons and potentially use them against Canadians wow. and our allies. Why did the Prime Minister cover up this national security threat? The Honourable Minister of Health. I've already said that the documents uh, first were released and then and then the additional redactions were actually commenced by us. The second point is uh, when the member says maliciously, uh, we don't know what their intention was. That's the purpose of an RCMP investigation. Secondly, these were these are individuals uh, that that I am deeply concerned about, like the member opposite. And in a process of due process, we understand what they did. With respect to the Chinese government, the military and the government and academia and scientists are all part of their military. That means that any connection that they had whatsoever uh, would have touched that. And so I think it's careful. Colleagues, it's hard to hear for the chair to hear the response. If uh, members are not satisfied with the response, uh, sometimes the best opportunity is just to listen to it in silence and let it stand on its own. The Honourable Member from uh, uh, Selkirk Interlake Eastman. The Health Minister should actually read the CSIS documents. It actually describes all the breaches that were done and the espionage that was carried out. At the Prime Minister's top public health labs in Canada, Beijing military scientist Dr. Yan was given unfettered access to all the labs and the computer systems at the Winnipeg labs, which were covertly shared by Dr. Chu with Beijing. Instead of stopping this espionage, the Prime Minister decided to cover it up. Why did the Prime Minister put his admiration for the basic dictatorship of the Communist Party in Beijing ahead of the public safety of Canadians? The Honourable Minister of Health. Speaker, I think it's important to step back and really consider what the Conservative uh, Party is saying here. Uh, that the at the end, at the time in which they were hired, the, these two Canadian citizens were eminent scientists uh, who were well published and well regarded throughout North America. Uh, the fact that they lied and misrepresented themselves, Mr. Speaker, is reprehensible. Colleagues, I'm going to ask members, please. I'll ask the member from uh, Miramichi Grand Lakes, please. Uh, to keep his comments to himself until the, when he, he will have the floor at the time that he asks a question. The Honourable Minister of Health has 15 seconds left on the clock. So I would hope what they're not suggesting is that if they were in power, that they would have uh, interfered politically, told, been able through clairvoyance to know that these eminent scientists who at this point in time had no reason to believe that they were anything other than Canadian scientists who were doing good research, that they would have interfered politically with clairvoyance and got rid of them before this happened. member from Shalabo Oats.
Mr. Speaker, yesterday we learned that there were documents with respect to the Winnipeg lab, and the worst is con confirmed there was a leak from the Chinese Communist Party. And the first represent person uh, represents a serious and credible threat uh, to Canada's economy was able to access this level four laboratory. Why did he not uh, protect Canadians, the Prime Minister, the Honourable Minister of Health? China, Russia, or in any other country? Well, it, well, this is an attack against our democracy, the House of Commons, and every member here. And it concerns me greatly. And this is the reason why we have measures now to ensure that we protect our public safety with policies that are as strong as possible to make sure our objective of in, uh, is not compromised. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg or Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, the Minister said that the Prime Minister, ad, well, the Prime Minister said he admired the basic dictatorship of China. And this lab in Winnipeg was working on some of the most dangerous viruses in the world. And there were dangerous pathos pathogens that were passed on to the Chinese party. Does he realize that the, our national safety was in peril? Mr. The Honourable Minister, what Canadians realize today, well, when we're talking about national security, it's not a partisan issue. And if there's something we won't take lessons on for the Conservative Party is protecting national security on research and science in Canada. We are the government that did the most to protect science in this country, to protect IP, to help our universities and research centres to identify risks. Mr. Speaker, last January we published a list that indicates our research institutes, research institutes rather, that not do uh, business. The Honourable Member for Charbourg or Saint-Charles. Mr. Speaker, does the minister on, know that on March 31st, the Ebola virus was sent to uh, Beijing through Canada? Uh, we sent a weapon to a country that is building up its stock of biological weapons. Does the prime minister realize that his government failed because the Chinese government is developing biological weapons and he's putting our security at risk, the Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, rather than talking about facts, what, what we hear from the opposition today is politicizing national security. And I think that all colleagues that were elected to this chamber, their first responsibility is the security and health of Canadians. As I said last January, we did publish a list for entities uh, that are protected to protect national security and IP will always be here to defend national security in Canada.